Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. And, you know, it feels like Monday, but it actually is uh, Tuesday, the 28th of May. And hope you had a great Memorial weekend. I'm Dave Adams. This is Valley Talk. And in the studio with us right now is John Gibson, our average investment guy. We're going to be talking about investment issues here in just a moment. But first of all, we had a great time this weekend, John, at uh, Honor Flight One Last Mission. This last weekend, we, uh, thanks to the uh, graciousness of the River Center in Lebanon, we showed the documentary. Honor Flight, One Last Mission, to about, uh, I think there was about 350 people there is, is the nearest numbers we can come up with. The week end before Saturday at the Pix Theater in Albany, we showed it to 200 people. It's a documentary about Honor Flight. Honor Flight is a program uh, that's a non-profit program that takes World War II veterans, flies them back to Washington, D.C., while they're still alive, of course, so they can see the honor that the nation has paid to them in the National World War II Memorial. There's a big push to put the Honor Flight program on the front burner now because a lot of these World War II veterans are getting older. They're in their mid-80s, their mid-90s, and they want to get as many of these guys and gals back there as they possibly can um, while they're still with us. To a lot of these World War II veterans, it, it gives them a sense of closure because uh, some of these guys have been carrying shell, they used to call it shell shock, but PTSD and just some of the issues for the last 40 years or more. And to go back there with their fellow World War II veterans and just share and at the memorial uh, is really important to them. So, the folks in the mid Willamette Valley have been very, very gracious, and they came out, they watched the movie, 350 at the River Center in Lebanon uh, this last Saturday, 200 the weekend before in Albany, that's 550 people. So, thanks to their graciousness, we can send about five World War II veterans from the mid Willamette Valley on an honor flight. Thank you also to Jay Bertram, Bertram's Medals, who underwrote the cost, the licensing cost of showing the movie in those two venues. And uh, so all of the ticket sales could go towards the Honor Flight program. Now, something we weren't counting on, which was an added bonus, is we sold probably about 50 copies of Honor Flight. In fact, we're still selling copies of that movie for $20 each. $10 goes to the National Honor Flight program. $10 goes to the Mid-Willamette Valley Hub in Eugene, which covers this area. And um, so half goes to the national program and half to the local program. We sold about 50 of copies of the movie and the copy that you'll get will be the actual honor flight one last mission documentary that you watched so if you watched it and you want a copy for your very own you can have it for 20 bucks and again half goes to the national program half to uh, to the midwell amid valley hub if you want um, more information on that you can either give me a call on my cell 541-280-8833 541-280-8833 or you can go to uh, a veteran's website that, that I operate called Operation Eagles Wings, operationeagleswings.us. And we'll have some information up there later today on how you can buy copies of that. Eagles Wings or KGAL does not get any of this money. It all goes to the Honor Flight program. So copies of that movie are still available. And a very big thank you to everybody who was involved. There was scores of people. A number of radio stations were involved, including KGAL K-Show. Uh, the Pix Theater, the River Center, uh, Honor Guards, and there's a long list of people. And we do, if we start mentioning names, we're going to leave somebody out. So I hate to do that. But a very big thank you and to members of the public that came to support it, that to show their support of veterans and to actually put their money where the mouth was and buy these movies and come to the show and, and allow us to raise money for Honor Flight was just a great, great way to to uh, remember Memorial Day weekend. Can't so, do enough for the veterans. There you go. So, that uh, is what we did this weekend. Thank you for being involved in it. June 6th is a big day coming up. It's Normandy. Uh, the Normandy invasion occurred on June 6th. Uh, we are going to be doing a special program. We're possibly going to do it as a Valley Talk segment here, but for sure going to do it as a, a live TV show on the website operationeagleswings.us possibly also on kgal.com. We're still working on the details of that. So I'm interested, if you're a World War II veteran that was at Normandy Beach on that day, uh, I want to hear from you. Again, my contact information, dave at operationeagleswings.us or davidkgal.com, or you can call my cell. Please don't call it now because I'm on the air. 
541-280-8833. And so that's coming up June 6th. We're looking forward to that as we continue to honor veterans. So thank you for being with us on Valley Talk today. John, how are you doing? I'm doing kind of dandy. Did you have a good weekend? Uh, yeah, had a good weekend. Um, you know, gutter cleaning, stuff like that, home ownership. Not too much rain for you, though. Not too it? much rain. I love Oregon. It can rain all day. There you go. Liquid sunshine. So what's going on with the <clears throat> stock market? Well, I'm, I'm just kind of confused as an investor. Um, you know, they had the uh, founder of Sun Microsystems on yesterday, uh, Scott, I forget his last name. He's a big, big guy. But he was... He was going down the list of everything that is concerning him, you know, um, especially the quantitative easing. <clears throat> quantitative easing. Quantitative easing is is a it's a way that the treasury is stimulating the economy to keep in, to keep uh, interest rates artificially low. They. It's kind of like getting us off, <coughs> off the crack cocaine slowly. Yes, that's exactly what it is. That analogy. For the last two works. months, uh, there's been two occasions where one of the Fed chiefs have come out and said, you know, probably by the end of June, we're going to start turning off the, the spigot. Right now, they're printing $85 billion a month, and they're buying up bad home loans and other derivatives that the banks created in back in 08 and they're just holding those so twice now they've floated the balloon over that they're going to start cutting it down and the market dropped right away and so um what they're hoping for they're hoping that if we can get to like four to five percent gdp growth gross domestic product growth um that that will be enough to kind of bridge us over so that we can withdraw off this artificial stimulation. The problem is our growth is coming in about one and a half, maybe two percent GDP. It's not enough. Um, so the question is, you have to stay in the market at this point because there's nowhere else to go. The ten-year yield, the ten-year yield, is giving you two percent a year. Well, inflation is three percent, so you're losing one percent a year. So you have to be in the market because it provides you big dividends and the potential for growth. And right now we're seeing the market at all-time highs. The question is, when, the time, when it's time to change direction, how will the market respond? And we've seen two times now that the market has no confidence in, in the stimulation stopping. So I'm, I'm like almost every other small investor. I've got my finger on the trigger. I don't know when to pull it. Um, I've still got substantial amounts in the stock market. I, I took about a quarter of it out last year, um, but mostly to buy a home. <clears throat> so uh, the, the market is going to continue to go up as long as the money continues to come in as from the government. Uh, from a corporation-wise uh, situation, you have China starting, it looks like they're starting to slip into a recession. Um, that's the other thing that you have to look at as opposed to 20 years ago is the global um, situation. For example, Japan is, you know, we're not only buying $85 billion worth of our stuff. Japan is buying $75 billion a month, all right? So there's a lot. That's about $150 billion just between two countries. What happens when that ends? And that's when you are going to probably have to pull the trigger and go to cash or go to gold or silver if you want to return. Frankly, I'll probably just go to cash because I'm 53, you know, I'm getting older, and I don't need another Black Monday like I experienced when I was 27, um, where I lost over half of my portfolio, as little as it was at that time, but it was still very hurtful. So this latest report about consumer confidence going up, does that surprise you? It surprises me. Gas is at four bucks a gallon. Um, you got Obamacare coming. You got uh, the payroll tax holiday has had gone away, and now your payroll taxes is back up to I think it's four percent or six percent. I don't know. It's a five-year high right now. <coughs> it is in May. Yeah, yeah. So th it's a bubble. This is what a bubble looks like. It just it's that you never know when it's going to end. And like if you go back to. Uh, Oh, gosh, my very first bubble I ever saw was created by these guys called the Hunt Brothers. Hunt Brothers. 
and they cornered the silver market. This was back when I was like 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. And the silver market just went way up, and then they realized what was going on, and they busted them, and everything came back down to normal. Same thing with your housing. You know, my house at one point was worth way more than I knew it was worth, and now it's come back down to where it should be. The market, even though it's fairly valued from a price-earnings ratio, it normally trades at around 15 percent or 15 PE price, price earnings ratio. Uh, it's down around 13 or 14. So it's under the market has room to go up from a valuation point. But there's so many other little factors out there, and the biggest is, of course, the the, the quantitative easing by the, by the Federal Reserve. And uh, I don't see that ending anytime soon. I don't think they can end it. Because now you got to throw in the, the, two, the 2014 election. You know, you have to factor that in. There's no way Obama's going to want to see the stock market take a tumble coming up on November. So you either have to get the correction over with now, or is going to be they're going to do everything they can. And we've seen some of the things that they're willing to go to, like tapping or grabbing people's private files and stuff. So, you know, they'll take whatever they want. Um, but I, I just don't see, I, I don't see the underneath pinnings of a really good economy, you know. I mean, things have changed so much. We don't even, you know, we, we used to count six components of unemployment. Mm -hmm. We cut three of them off. Uh, the people who just quit looking, the ones that are underemployed, and the ones that want full-time work or something. I, I forget the third one. But if we'd, if we'd have kept the the... the structure that we had back in the 80s and 90s, our unemployment rate would be like 15%. But that's un unacceptable. So we just shaved the numbers. So I'm, I'm, I don't have a lot of confidence at this point, but I'm still in the market. But this, back to this consumer confidence, you know, I'm not an economic, um, my degree is not in economic anal analyzation in any means. But it's kind of interesting to me that it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that when, when the consumers are feeling more confident, they're spending more money. They're spending more money, more jobs are created, they're spending more money, and it's this, this wheel. You get on this wheel and, and spin it in a good direction, and that's a good thing. Consumer confidence going up is good. It frees up some of that money. Uh, the employers get more confident. They start hiring more people, and it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy. And it, it's good to see that, but at but then here is the variable that I'm not astute enough to really know what the answer is. Is at what point is it just the consumer confidence spinning that wheel? And at what other point is it that other factors are, are coming into play? Well, the factor that you have in play in this case that makes it unrealistic is the huge increase in food stamps and the huge increase in disability, um, un 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 disability payments. Um, what the problem is, we're not getting the jobs. You know, we're all happy about maybe getting 180,000 jobs created in a month. But goodness, back in Reagan's days, it was five, 600,000 a month. And, and they were the real jobs. The jobs that you're seeing today are mostly part-time, um, low-paying mm -hmm. But one of the things jobs. that, that uh, consumers are responding to, according to the reports we're looking at here, claim is that unemployment benefits last week are down, significantly mm -hmm. down, and you could argue that it's a numbers game when you mm -hmm. talk about unemployment rates and so on and so forth. What I'm wondering is, has it been that consumers have been very tight with their money for so long that they just want to go out and buy some things, and they want to feel good, and they want to think that things are getting better, and they're looking, I hate to say it, looking for an excuse to be confident in the economy and starting to go out and spend more. Well, I, I think, think perhaps, I mean, you know, things do have a life cycle, so your washer is going to break down at some point, and you're going to have to replace it. Um, but I, I, what I don't see, what I don't see is the structure of the corporations booming. You know, what I see is cost cutting. I see productivity increasing, but, you know, they're cutting jobs. So what they're doing is investing in, in, in robots and, and other kinds of uh, infrastructure that costs way less. You know, you can't unionize a robot. Mm -hmm. Businesses um, have become more efficient because of the downturn. Very much, yeah. And uh, so that's what we're riding. We're riding that efficiency wave. We're not, ri we're not riding a... Uh, booming economy wave. We're just barely limping along. 
we are getting better. I mean, things are growing a little bit. But, um, you know, you're seeing people like Red Lobster, Darden Restaurants, or is it Brinker? I think it's Brinker, uh, who owns the Red Lobster, Olive Garden, and people like that. They're, they're taking all of their full-time employees, their wait staff, to, to 30 hours a week so that they don't have to pay Obamacare. I want to talk about that, but go ahead. Now, that person has to go out and somehow find 10 hours somewhere else or change his or her lifestyle. Um, so that's, you know, that's not, a, that's not a change in a strong way. That's a change making our economy weaker, and, and that's not good. According to the rules, uh, companies with 50 or more employees, full-time employees, have to provide health insurance. So the key here is full-time employees. We're starting to see a lot of the big box stores and other, uh, other companies, you just mentioned one, go to 30-hour work weeks because that way they're keeping their employees part-time and don't have to provide benefits like health insurance, mm -hmm. which uh, is, could be very, will be very expensive as we're talking, talking about um, providing health insurance benefits. So one thing I'm wondering about in the economy is as that starts to come to play, what is that going to do in the economy? Is it going to bring it down? I'm surprised, for example, this consumer confidence going up, that surprises me. Yeah, I mean, this is, it, this is like 1984. I mean, war is peace. I mean, everything is opposite. How in the world... I mean, here they... Remember that sequestration drama? Mm -hmm. All about cutting $85 billion out of the annual budget. And because the half of the year was over, it was only about $40 billion. Well, we're printing $85 billion a month, you know, a month, and buying our own debt. So it can't last. I don't know how you get out of it. Um, but right now, you know, your daughter out there owes the government $53,000, and she hasn't done a thing. Carissa, and pay, pay up. up. So, and if you're a taxpayer, you know, you owe about 140000 So, you know, it is just... I, I'm scared, but I'm in the market. you got to be in the market because there's nowhere else to go at this point. Now, there, I'm sure there are people listening. In fact, I can mention a few of them by name right now that I won't. But I know what they're saying is when they're listening to us say this. They, they accuse us of being doomsdayers, uh, portraying gloom. And they say, hey, just relax. Everybody's more confident. They're spending more money. It's, it's gearing up the economy. It's making that wheel spin But the only good way direction. that you make money in the market is to look six months ahead. I, I'm not worried about today. You know, when I make an investment, you know, when I took out a fourth of my portfolio last year, it was based on tax issues. I didn't know what was going to be the tax issue, so I'd rather have the cash now uh, locked in. And I wanted to buy a home, you know. I don't look at today uh, for my market information. I'm looking at what's going to happen come fall. The old saying is sell in May and go away. So are we going to do that this year? Are we going to peak right now? And then six months from now, am I going to be looking back going, geez, you know, I should have I should have took some off. So I'm sorry if I sound doom and gloom, yeah. but you have to put the facts out there and the facts are that we're printing money that we don't have and that we're running a deficit that we've never had before and they run the numbers and they tell you how much it's going to cost and yet everybody just says oh well, well so i mean i'm sorry but you gotta you, when, when the 10-year note hits four percent and it's gone from 1.5 to over two in the last three months well let's talk if about it that it's five boy our debt payment's going to you know, triple. Let's talk about that oh well here in just a moment. I want to follow up on that. We do want to remind you the second half of the show, we are going to be talking to, uh, and I hope I get these names right. I'll get some nods from the green room there. Uh, Elsie Kunzo and Jolie Root. Did I get that right? They're going to be with us on Valley Talk here in about uh, 10 minutes, and we're going to be talking about what's going on with the Lebanon Garden Club. And did I get those names right? Kins Her name's Kinsley. Kinsley. Elsie Kinsley and Jolie Root. Yes. And they're going to be with us here on Valley Talk here in just a minute. So we're going to take a break right now. And uh, John Gibbs and I will finish up on a thought, and then we'll switch gears and talk about the Garden Club. So stick with us here. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Be right back. Introducing a brand new premium McWrap from McDonald's. With fresh vegetables and delicious chicken bundled together in a meal-sized wrap, each bite you take is like no bite you've ever tasted before. 
Hold the phone. I'm taking another bite. <laughs> the new premium McWrap. With three delicious flavors, it's a whole new way to love McDonald's. At participating locations. Around here, we take refreshment pretty seriously. How else do you explain the coffee cart in front of the coffee shop next to the other coffee shop? And we all know those mental reboots can cost. But at McDonald's, whether you want a soft drink or a coffee, you can refresh for just a buck. At McDonald's, you can get any size ice cold soft drink or any size rich premium roast coffee for just one dollar every day. It's more value to love. Perk up for a buck? Now that's what I call refreshing. A la carte only. Price and participation may vary. The time of year for strawberries in Lebanon is here again. It's the 104th annual Strawberry Festival with this year's theme, Strawberries of the Round Table. The Strawberry Festival kicks off with the Queen's Coronation Thursday at the Lebanon High School Auditorium. Bring all the youngsters to downtown Lebanon for the Junior Parade Friday, May 31st. Get your blood pumping on Saturday with the 5K run and walk starting at 7.30 in the morning. The Grand Parade starts at 11 a.m. and it is grand stretching from the River Center all the way through downtown Lebanon with hundreds of floats, antique cars, marching bands, and more featuring the strawberries of the round table. After the Grand Parade, everyone's invited to enjoy a piece of the world's largest strawberry shortcake at Sheetal Lake Park. Right now, you can get your all-day passes for the Strawberry Festival Carnival for only $22 at the Lebanon Chamber of Commerce. Come and celebrate the 104th Lebanon Strawberry Festival May 30th through June 2nd. I'd like you to pause just for a moment and consider the health of your best friends. You see, Paws Animal Hospital is now open in Lebanon. Dr. Johnson and her staff love animals, and you'll feel that love from the first time you meet them. Paws Animal Hospital uses the latest technology. Plus, you'll have confidence in the treatment of your pets and you with a doggy daycare and drive-up pharmacy. Open Sundays through Thursdays in Lebanon at the corner of Pine Street and the Santa Yem Highway. Paws Animal Hospital. Willamette Speedway is fired up this weekend for the ESCS 360 Sprints this Friday and the Strawberry Cup Saturday, June 1st. Dirt Car Super Late Models qualifying heat for the late models and it's the Strawberry Cup this Saturday. Dirt Car Super Late Models with the LCQs and main events. IMCA Mod, Super Sports, Street Stocks, Mini Trucks. For more information, log on to TrophyMotorsports.com. Willamette Speedway, the greatest show on dirt and the fastest way to family fun. Be there. You can call us lefty or you can call us righty. We just call it Smarty Talk on 1580 KGAL. Thank you for being with us on Valley Talk today. Again, remember, we are still selling copies of Honor Flight One Last Mission, $20 each. Half the money goes to the national program. Half the money goes to uh, the mid Willamette Valley Hub and helps send uh, World War II veterans from the mid Willamette Valley back to Washington, D.C. on an Honor Flight. If you want to see a trailer of the movie, just go on their website, Honor Flight One Last Mission. Google that. If you want to find out how maybe you're not on the list yet, you want to buy a movie, you can uh, call me, Dave, 541-280-8833. I don't make any money off this. KGAL doesn't make any money off this. And uh, neither does uh, Eagle's Wings. Uh, no, nobody you... makes money on it. Well, I mean, no, it's, it all goes to the cause of yeah, sending World War II veterans back. Half of it goes back. to Eugene, to the, to the hub. Right. And you can find out more on going to our... Um, Operation EaglesWings.us, which is not officially affiliated with Honor Flight, but we do support it, which is a veterans news network based mm -hmm. here in Albany. So thank you for being involved, and thank you for honoring veterans. Let's finish up, uh, John Gibson, as far as thoughts. We got we're talking about consumer confidence. Yep. And, and you think it's a bubble that's going to burst? Well, I, 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 I don't know. We're going to see jobs uh, a week from Friday. We'll have non-farm payrolls for the month of April or for the month of May. We'll see how those come in. Last month, they come in at about 200000 The month before that, they came in at about 160000 I do believe. We really need about 250000 just to keep up with the people entering the workforce. So um, I think that this is... You know, I've seen a lot of bubbles in my time, and and I think this is a this is a credit bubble, uh, a treasury bubble, and when it pops, um, I've seen I lost half of my portfolio in two days in 1987, and I didn't know what to do, and I just sat down and cried, and that's what I want to avoid, and that's why I try to keep my eyes open, and see what we're doing, and what we're doing is not encouraging small businesses, and that's. That's where I would start if I wanted to get the economy to recover. 
Okay. Well, next Tuesday, we'll take this conversation a little farther as far as what I'd like to know. Maybe homework for you. Mm -hmm. What would you do to encourage small business? Mm -hmm. Sure. And we'll talk okay. about that a little bit more uh, next Tuesday All on right. Valley Talk. So thanks, thanks for, for having me. This, John. Now we're going to turn and we're going to talk about flowers. And we are going to talk about the Lebanon Garden Club we have in the studio right now. Elsie Kinsley and Julie Root. Jolie. Jolie Root from the Lebanon Garden Club. Thank you for being with us on Valley Talk today. A strawberry Festival is coming up, and you guys are a big part of it. Well, we have a big flower quilt and art show starting um, actually Thursday night when uh, the people bring in their quilts and their art and their flowers. Anyone that wants to enter the flower show from 7 to 9, they can enter their flowers. There's people there to help... Uh, help if they don't know quite what it is or the the technical name for it for the flowers and uh, there's not only flowers but there's vines and there's different categories that they can enter the flower show also on friday morning from seven to nine people can come and enter flowers or the other categories how many people on a, how long have you been involved with the flower show, flower and quilt show at the uh, Strawberry Festival? Well, I've been running in about is it five, five or six years. I'm not sure which year I'm on. Anyway, in charge of it. Anyway, it I've helped for quite a number of years. After a time, it all runs together, doesn't it? Yeah. E yes. This, especially this time of year. How many people attend your show? I'd say. Uh, we have people sign in our guest book, uh, I'd say 250 to 300. It, it increases every year. And how far, how far are they coming? Are they coming from Portland? Are they coming from other oh, states? Oh, last, uh, I think it was last year, we had uh, somebody from Europe. They were visiting from Europe, and they, uh, a few people came, or other parts of the United States, commonly from Washington or the, you know, the northwest region. Or California. Yeah. Or Cal a lot, yeah. People are visiting from California. We have visitors from, you know, all over. One of the things that's really impressed me about the Mid Willamette Valley here, the Albany, uh, Lebanon, Corvallis area, has been the flowers, the rhododendrons. The springtime here is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I've lived in some pretty nice places. I lived in New Zealand for nine months, and uh, but the flowers here. You know, sorry if you're in in. Kiwi land, and you're listening to the broadcast on the internet, but I think the Mid Willamette Valley is prettier than New Zealand in the springtime because of all the flowers. Those big rhododendron bushes bloom out, and it's just gorgeous. The rain we had this last weekend, does that hurt the flowers? Oh, yeah. Beat them mm -hmm. up a little bit? That's not only the rain that we're having now, it's, it's the heat we had in the last couple weeks. You know, these 80 degree weathers and, and higher, all all the flowers are blooming. Yeah. And uh, normally you never know when you have a flower show what flowers you're going to get. You know, but people are telling me, well, my houses are all gone and the rain has ruined my whatevers. And so there's a, that's always the worry, you know. You can't have a flower show without flowers. And so you get kind of anxious this time of the year. So normally, you. and w w with the weather conditions we've had, Wow. It's been uh, interesting. It's been yes, hot. It has. And then it's been rainy and windy in some places mm -hmm. this last weekend. Yeah. So what's the flower situation look like? Are we going to have a good crop of flowers? One never knows. One never One knows. I could only hope. It's always a, um, what do you call it? Give me the word for it. I can't think uh, of the word. Yeah. It's always a surprise, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Some years you have... Uh, Iris is, uh, you know, Iris is out the door, and yeah. some years it's roses out the door. It just, you just never know. And with the weather added, it's a uh, real... Well, with the uh, warmer weather earlier in the season, it forces everything to just bloom right out, and then it cools off and doesn't give it, uh, us enough time for the second bloom of the, of the flowers. And uh, a lot of times, you just don't get as many... As mm -hmm. expected, but we can what, only hope. What is it about the Mid Willamette Valley? I mentioned, you know, I've, I haven't lived everywhere, but I've lived in a, in a number of places. The flowers here are gorgeous. There's something about growing things here in the Mid Willamette Valley, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, temperate a, climate, yeah, soil? Yeah, there is. Yeah. 
It's the moisture. And the right amounts. Right. Right. Well, one thing uh, to remember, though, that uh, your flowers only affect the horticulture. And the horticulture, when you enter a flower show, you go out and you, you cut your rows or you cut your flowers that are growing mm -hmm. that you have grown yourself. And that's what you bring for the horticulture. But there's also a second category that's design. That's where you have, uh, you make a, a centerpiece for instance, to call it something, you make a centerpiece, and we have different categories for the centerpieces. Such as and what? The, and, excuse Go me. Go ahead. Uh, and those can be flowers that can be purchased. So when you consider it's only the horticulture that's affected by the rain, you can go out and buy flowers at the store or at the nursery or something that you want to use in your design. So... Um, it's only half ruined or half massed, if you want to call it that. What are some of the categories for the centerpiece design we were mentioning? Before, before we tell you that, sure. I'd like to interject that if you purchase flowers for the design, be sure and get ones that aren't dyed. They have to be in the natural color because that's part of the rules of the flower show. You can dye flowers. I'm going to show my ignorance here as far as uh, flowers. Yes, florists sometimes dye them different colors. Do they? Mm -hmm. Turquoise or green or just... They do, know. like, green for St. Patrick's Day and that, you mm -hmm. know. They use spray paint or food yeah, color? Sure. Or? You they can use they food spray. coloring or you can, they do have a floral spray that you can use on. Really? I wasn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the categories for the... Um, uh, we always try to uh, name categories that go along with the theme of the strawberry fair uh -huh. and this year it's uh, strawberries of the round table yes. so we have categories such as sword in the stone camelot coat of arms sherwood forest knights of the round table crown jewels the hobbit the ring the chalice dark ages fantasy and um it's gonna for be interesting. people Go yes it will for people that um our novices about uh, making designs. We have two design consultants that are available on Thursday night, this Thursday night, when you can enter your designs. Is that Elsie and Jolie? No. Oh, okay. No. 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 It's, it's, Louis, it be, it's yeah, Louise and, and Dina. <laughs> oh. We're just helpers. Donna, not Dina. Okay. Um, and uh, they, they are uh, design consultants. consultants. They can, if you bring in your design, they can advise and consult if there's something a little that you need or something. And that's, believe me, I'm, I'm a novice. I have never entered a design. And every year, every year I say, this is going to be the year I'm going to do it. But as chairman, I find that uh, I am... Uh, too busy? I am really busy. This this week is a section. A I'll set. Bet. You know, some of these categories... Did you want to show her something? Some of the categories are very interesting to me. Like Knights of the Knights of the Round Table. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hobbit. It's going to be interesting to come to the Flower Show and just see what some of these other... These categories are. What, what would people put together for a Sword in the Stone, for example, or Hobbit? The Hobbit, with the Hobbit movie that's come out recently... A lot of interest in uh, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Yeah. Well, your design is you, you tell the story by your design. You can have accessories. But um, um, we have a youth workshop coming up on Thursday. We, had this, we have categories for the youth. And uh, they're really interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, we have a, girls that... Uh, are uh, going to conduct a workshop for the youth. And um, what they do, they come in on Thursday night and they work on their design and then they fill out their entry card and then they put it in the show. Jolie, did you want to add something? Uh, yes, I want to let everybody know that we have flower show schedule books so that, uh, and they're available at the, um, at the newspaper office and um, the Chamber of Commerce in Lebanon, the Senior Center, um, Green Thumb Nursery, and there'll be the design categories in those for people to follow. Is there a fee for the books? No, they're free. 
and uh, we have a few entry cards with them too. They can also get entry cards when they bring their projects to the uh, flower show site on Thursday night. Uh, I want to say to everybody, um, I've been working with the flower show for years and about three years ago, I finally got brave enough to, to do a design myself. I thought, well, I'll just do something crazy and, uh, and I've never done one before because I was a little hesitant and, and don't feel that way at all because if you have an idea in your head, just, just do it because I did that, took my design in and I won second place. So there that encouraged go. me to keep entering in shows. So, uh, so don't get discouraged. If, you, if I can do it, you can do it. You only live once, go a little bit crazy, That's and especially true. some of these categories. Like I mentioned more before, I'm Lord of the Rings. I love that movie, and I haven't seen The Hobbit yet, but some of this, the categories that you mentioned aren't what you would think of specifically for a flower design for a table, like Sword in the Stone and so on and so forth. So it should be very interesting to see what they come up with. That's right. And the categories, I might mention, I mentioned the Youth Workshop. It uh, starts at six o'clock, and you can um, you can get the categories in the in the schedule. But I might read a few of the youth categories, which will be at the flower show site on uh, the Evangelical Church Annex on the corner of Ash and Park. Okay. Okay. Swords, dragon, wizard, fairy tale, unicorn, castle, fantasy, Robin Hood. Maid Marian, and to me that's just, that's youth all over those categories, you know. So it should be rather fun to see what the, what the kids come up with. Very fun. And one of the things when we come back after this commercial break, we're going to talk about youth in the flower show. And are we seeing, the question I've got that we'll answer when we come back is, are we seeing youth involved? For example, in the flower, flower club, do we want to see more? And how do we get them to engage? We'll talk about that in just a moment. This is Valley Talk, and we'll be right back. The Osgood File, sponsored by Kronos, providing cloud-based workforce management solutions for organizations of all sizes. Kronos, K-R-O-N-O-S, workforce innovation that works. More at Kronos.com. This is Dave Ross, and for Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network, Therapy on four legs. Dogs have been proven to lower blood pressure, lower stress, and decrease anxiety just by offering the unconditional love and support. More after this from Charlie. They say that starting your own business is one of the toughest things anyone can do. Luckily, the folks at the UPS store have your back because when you open your own UPS store location, you're not alone. Through thousands of locations nationwide, you have the opportunity of joining a solid business network, a network that provides support for veterans, financial and real estate assistance, and promotional tools to help you get up and running. They also make sure that you're ready for business with training programs designed to help you develop the knowledge and skills you'll need to run your own store. So, doesn't it seem like a good idea to open your own small business with the UPS store? After all, you'll be part of Entrepreneur Magazine's number one ranked postal and business services franchise, all while helping your local economy. Join the UPS store and be in business for yourself, not by yourself. Visit franchise.theupsstore.com for more information. One more time, that's franchise.theupsstore.com. Lately, when there's a tragedy, the response doesn't just involve police and fire. It doesn't just involve FEMA and aid workers. Lately, the recovery effort also involves animals, and in particular, therapy dogs, like the ones raised by Michelle Coffey. They love the work, and they get so excited just to comfort people and to be able to, to have lots of attention from people. They were used after the bombings in Boston and for the victims of Hurricane Sandy. And they also visit hospital patients. CBS correspondent Magali Laguerre-Wilkinson talked with cancer patient Darren Kelly, a professional actor undergoing chemotherapy for a cancerous growth in his neck. It's an ordeal that's a little more bearable thanks to a couple of therapy dogs who aren't phased by the machines and the doctors and who wag their tails no matter what's going on. I've lost my taste buds. Arf. Right now, the dogs are... that's medicine. That is medicine. Huh. Is that how you see it? Is yeah, it? it's medicine, it's therapy, it's distraction, it's... It helps you get through. But does the science back that up? Nurse practitioner Catherine Concert was part of a three-year study into whether therapy dogs can reduce stress for cancer victims. And the results won't be out for a few months. But when you ask her... I think you, you're going to show positive results. 
the patients come in, they're anxious. Yeah. A dog walks in. Their anxiety level goes down. The Osgood File, Dave Ross, on the CBS Radio Network. Going out to lunch at a nice restaurant can be expensive, and the big portions put you more in the mood for a nap than a productive afternoon. Mama's Fine Italian to the Rescue. The small appetite senior menu is just right. Anyone and everyone is invited to order from the Light Appetites menu for lunch from 11 to 4 p.m. with tasty entrees beginning at only $4.95. Why go hungry or go anywhere else for lunch? Eat healthy, eat light at Mama's. Closed Sunday and Monday, so make the most of Tuesday through Friday and join your friends at Mama's for lunch. Dinner only on Saturday. Mama's features charbroiled steaks every day. Make reservations for dinner or pick up a bottle of fine wine. Seating is limited, so please call for reservations. 541-451-5050. That's 451-5050. Mama's Fine Italian and Wine Shop. On West Oak, between Main and 2nd in Lebanon. Across from the Big Blue Napa Auto Parts Building. This is Rich Abris, service manager at Power Buick GMC, and I'm here to tell you that not only is Power Buick GMC the number one local dealership to purchase a new or used vehicle, we are your General Motors service headquarters. Our GM trained and ASC certified technicians service Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, GMC, Hummer, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, and Saturn vehicles. In or out of warranty. Extended warranties, no problem. Cars not GM built, no problem. Call Power today at 541-757-1415 on the corner of 5th and Buchanan in Corvallis. From PCs to the Internet, Kim Commando has the answers. Saturday mornings on News Talk 1580 KGAL. And welcome back to uh, Garden Welcome back to Garden Talk. It is Valley Talk. We are talking about gardens. The Lebanon Garden Club is with us in the studio. And uh, two individuals from that club, Elsie Kinsley and Jolie Root. And thank you for being with us on Valley Talk today. One of the things that we want to talk about on the show this year as part of the Lebanon Strawberry Festival is... Um, this year is going to be a new category for succulents. Let's talk about that. Yeah, every year we tried to add something that people are interested in. Last year, it was orchids, and one of the ladies that belongs to the Corvallis Orchid Society had a uh, display of orchids at, at the show. And this year we added sedums and succulents. And uh, Tru Trudy Basin, who is one of our members, uh, has Timeless Gardens, a nursery uh, out on Brewster Road. And uh, she's preparing a display table of sedums and succulents for us. So uh, it ought to be pretty interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of something else we added last year. I'm sorry, I'm having a blank. That's fine. Succulents. If for those of us who are not into flowers and aren't members of the Le uh, Lebanon Garden Club and aren't experienced in all things flowers, what's succulent? A succulent is um, um, in California. You see a lot of succulents on the the hillsides. They grow them on the hillside so that uh, the the brush is not dry. It's kind of a fluffy, watery. I'm probably not giving a very good dem uh, definition of it, but that's the best I can do right now. Pretty flower, though. Uh, yes, there are a lot of okay. them flowers, sure. Yeah, there's different varieties. But the foliage, the foliage is very, um, it doesn't get dry. It it stays well, think of a cactus. with a lot of, yeah, with a lot of moist, uh, the succulents uh, have a lot of water in them. And that's why they grow them on hillsides and that. To hold the hillsides, it's a, and it's a, a fire deterrent. Interesting. And so it also keep, kind of keeps the hillside from sliding down the hill. Mm -hmm. One of the things we were going to talk about was youth, getting youth to engage in the Lebanon Garden Club. We were mentioning a couple times in the show already that we want youth to get involved. Are we seeing youth, more youth involved? Of course, there's probably room for more. It's, uh, it kind of depends. Uh, we have one of our grandmothers. She has her, her, uh, a couple of her grandchildren. They enter every year, and they have for since uh, I've been a chairman. And uh, I think she's a former school teacher. I wish I could remember her name. I guess it's a senior moment that I'm having. Sue Spiker. Sue Spiker. Okay. Sue Spiker. <laughs> yeah. Jo Jolie just prompted me sue spiker yeah her grandkids er, win every year and and they have such great fun 
And uh, I think it depends on... They're uh, talented. Yes. I think it depends on whether the mother or the grandmother are interested in flowers and growing things. And they kind of encourage their grandkids. I know I have a thing about rocks. Rocks? Uh, yeah, Pretty rocks. rocks. I collect rocks. I like rocks. Are you a rock hound? Yeah. yeah. Do you go and, do the thing? And my, grand, my grandchildren bring me rocks. They like rocks. So you see the, the analogy uh, between a uh, grandmother or mother that oh. loves flowers and their grandchildren and grandmother that loves rocks and their grandchildren. Do you collect the thunder eggs? Yes, I do. Do you go to I, the I, I, I collect pretty rocks. My husband has been known to stop short uh, on a highway when I says, wait, stop, I see something winking at me. And we stop and collect a rock. All things beautiful. Right. Right. Uh, one thing about the youth design, so it, it has to be made by the youth. Their mother or grandmother can't make it for them. It has to be their idea, and they decide what they want to do. But one of the nice things about the Lebanon Garden Club and flowers and, I guess, rocks, too, is it's something that old and young can work together on. So it's something you can build memories with your kids as we're talking right. about getting young people involved. Right, right. We have in this, uh, for our youth categories, for our uh, workshop and our show, we have um, three age groups, 7 and under, 8 to 12, and 13 to 18. And now also, for the first time, uh, we're, we uh, are accepting entries for quilts from uh, 18 and under, and also for the art, fourth grade through high school. And um, they're the same categories. The, in the quilts, there are heritage, contemporary, and traditional. And for the art, there's photography, fiber art and paintings so the youth can enter there's i know my grandchildren love art also and so uh, so uh, last year fiber art was added yes what is fiber art fiber art is um you do paintings with um well, isn't uh, it like a uh, yarn work yarn, yarn work or cross cruel. stitch or cruel work or something like that it's called fiber art how is that has that been a popular category How's it been going? Um, there's quite a few, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but far uh, there's far more quilts. But there's uh, also some young people that are doing some really fine quilt work. I know one of the girls that won, won one of the people's. The quilt in the yard is uh, people's choice. People come in and vote for their favorites, and so. Uh, uh, we are talking to Elsie Kensley and jo Jolie Root with the Lebanon Garden Club about their uh, garden show as part of the Strawberry Festival this year. We're going to take one more break here on Valley Talk and more about the event coming up in just a moment. I have to melt in a quilt. Qu the Mennonite Village in-home care program has another happy client. Hi, my name is Melinda Moore, and I'm happy to be able to share my experiences with in-home care at the Mennonite Village. My mom, Margaret Kirk, moved to Albany about seven years ago when she was 87. From that time until today, the in-home caregivers at Mennonite Village have been just crucial. She started out just needing someone once a week, and then as time's gone on and she's become less mobile, they've become an absolute crucial part of her both physical and emotional well-being. We couldn't get along without them. She's with them 24 hours a day. They work with the family so much that we feel like they're part of our family, and they've become my mom's very best friends. I could not say enough things about in-home care and would recommend them at any level for anybody. Contact Sue Curry for more information at 541-928-2136 or visit MennoniteVillage.org. Now you can manage your printers as easy as you manage your copiers. Managed print services from Ultrax. Maintenance, toner cartridges, and repairs all in just one monthly payment. Hewlett Packard, Lexmark, Brother, just to name a few. All you have to do is buy the paper. It's that easy. Just call Ultrax today and ask about their managed print services. Ultrax Business Solutions, your locally owned and operated copier company, proudly supporting our community. Ultrax Business Solutions. This is Charles Osgood. 
I live in New York City, where you walk everywhere all year long. And when you're outside that much, you need more than just sunscreen or regular sunglasses. You need polarized prescription sunglasses with Xperio UV lenses. They eliminate 100% of the sun's blinding reflective glare. And they offer maximum UV protection so you can see clearly and your eyes are protected. Ask your eye care professional about Xperio UV Superior Polarized Sun Lenses. It's the best vision under the sun. Uh, excuse me, sir. Hi, what do you need? Pants in a 44 waist. Looking for something lace? No, a, a 44 waist? A shoelace? I need a 44 waist. We don't carry that size. What? I want a prize? No. Stop shopping in no man's land. There's a better way for bigger men to find clothes. Now open. Visit DestinationXL.com to find a store near you. Destination XL. Big on being better. Is the bubble bu boing into your seat, sending you through the roof? Then see the ASC certified technicians at Kingsbury Automotive. You'll get peace of mind and competitive pricing with every expert repair. In Lebanon, call 541-258-2240 for Kingsbury Automotive. Everything for your car. Two fifty eight twenty two forty for Kingsbury Automotive. Need a home? Then listen to Real Estate Talk with Dave Pouch Saturday mornings on Smart Talk fifteen eighty. Welcome back to Valley Talk, and on the show with us today, we have uh, the pleasure of having Elsie Kinsley and Jolie Root with the Lebanon Garden Club. We're talking about the event. It's part of Strawberry Festival and it's coming up this weekend, and it is the Garden Show, the Flower Show. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about time, date, place. I might say flower quilt and art show. Okay. And it's at the Evangelical Church of Lebanon, which is at 75 East Ash. It's at the corner of Ash and Park, a uh, kitty corner from the Elks Lodge. And it's the old, if for those who've lived in Lebanon a long time, it's the old, old Safeway building. And there's no charge to attend. There's no charge to attend. It starts uh, Friday. It opens up uh, after the, if, uh, about 1 o'clock. We have judging. We have professional flower show judges that judge, and then we f feed them lunch. And then at 1 o'clock, we open the show to the public, and the it's on Friday from 1 to 4.30, and on Saturday it works out to be um, noon to 4.30, and it's after the big parade. We're right down the street from Main Street, the next block, and so we we'll hope you come out. And there's no charge to attend. We have about 60 seconds left in the show. If people want information about how they can sign up, maybe they've, something has piqued their interest in what they've heard today, how can they get in touch with you? Um, you can go to the uh, Lebanon Express. You can go get a schedule. Uh, all the information's in the schedule. Lebanon Express, Chamber, Senior Center. And uh, my phone number is 451-3554. 541-451-3554. And this is Valley Talk. Thank you for being with us today. Tune in tomorrow and listen for promos as far as the topic of uh, the next show we have. Have a good day. Enjoy the weather. Stay dry and honor our veterans. Thanks for being with us. The Mid Valley home of Smart Talk. This is News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.